Postscript. When the sailors were in the creek, there was a wag from Stavoran among them, who said Medea may well laugh if we rescue her from her citadel. Upon this, the maidens gave to the creek the name Medea, Melelakia, Lake of Medea. The occurrences that happened after this, everybody can remember. The maidens are to relate it in their own way and have it well inscribed. We consider that our task is fulfilled. Hail, the end of the book. The writings of Aldobrast and Apollonia. My name is Aldobrast, the son of Apollo and Adela. I was elected by the people as Gravetman over Linda Orden. Therefore, I will continue this book in the same way as my mother has spoken it. After the Maggie was killed in Freiesburg, was restored, a mother had to be chosen. The mother had not named her successor, and her will was nowhere to be found. Seven months later, in General Assembly, was called at Granega, Groningen, because it was on the boundary of Saxamarken. My mother was chosen, but she would not be the mother. She had saved my father's life, in consequence of which they had fallen in love with each other, and she wished to marry. Many people wished my mother to alter her decision, but she said an era mother ought to be as pure in her conscience as she appears outwardly, and to have the same love for all her children. Now, as I appall, better than anything else in this world, I cannot be such a mother. Thus spoke and reasoned Adela, but all the other maidens wished her to be the mother. Each state was in favor of its own maiden and would not yield, therefore none was chosen, and the kingdom was without any restraint. From what follows you will understand Lugert, the king, who had lately, lately died, had been chosen in the lifetime of the mother, and seemingly with the love and confidence of all the states. It was his turn to live at the great court of Dokem, and in the lifetime of the mother great humor was done to him there, as there were more messengers and knights there than had ever been seen there before. But now he was lonely and forsaken, because everyone was afraid that he would set himself above the law and rule them like the slave kings. Every headman imagined that he did enough if he looked after his own state and did not care for the others. With the Baruch Martin, it was still worse. Each of them depended upon her own judgment, and whenever a Gravetman did anything without her, she raised distrust between him and his people. If any case happened which concerned several states, and one maid had been consulted, and the rest all exclaimed that she had spoken only in the interest of her own state. And by such proceedings, they brought disputes among the states, and so severed the bond of union that the people of one state were jealous of those of the rest, or at least considered them as strangers. The consequence of which was that the Gauls and the Truind and Druids took possession of our lands as far as the Scheldt and the Magi, as far as Wasara. How this happened, my mother has explained, otherwise this book would not have been written. Although I have lost all hope that it would be of any use, I do not write in the hope that I shall win back the land or preserve it. In my opinion, that is impossible. I write only for the future generations that they may all know in what way we were lost, and that each may learn that every crime brings its punishment. My name is Apollonia. Two and thirty days after my mother's death, my brother Adelbrost was found murdered on the wharf his skull fractured and his limbs torn asunder. My father, who lay ill, died of fright. And then my younger brother, Apol, sailed from here to the west side of Schumland. There he built a citadel named Lindesberg in order there to avenge our wrong. Waraldo accorded him many years for that. He had five sons who all caused fear to Maggie and brought fame to my brother. After the death of my mother and my brother, all the bravest of the land joined together and made a covenant called Adelbond. 
in order to preserve us from injury, they brought me and my youngest brother, Adolhurt, to the Burgt, me to the maidens, and him to the warriors. When I was 30 years old, I was chosen as a Burgmogd, and my brother at 50 was chosen Gravetman. From my mother's side, my brother was the sixth, but from my father's side, the third. By right, therefore, his descendants could not put Uvra Linda after their names, but they all wished to do it in honor of their mother. In addition to this, there was given to us also a copy of the Book of Adela's Flowers that gave me the most pleasure because it came into the world by my mother's wisdom. In the Burgt, I have found other writings also in praise of my mother. All this I will write afterwards. These are the writings left by Bruno, who was the writer of this Burgt, after the followers of Adela had made copies, each in his kingdom, of what was inscribed upon the walls of the Burgt. They resolved to choose a mother. For this purpose, a general assembly was called at this farm. By the first advice of Adela, Tiu Yint was recommended. That would have been arranged only by my Bergmagd as to speak. She had always supposed that she would be chosen mother because she was at the Burgt from which mothers had generally been chosen. When she was allowed to speak, she opened her false lips and said, you all seem to place great value on Adela's advice, but that shall not shut my mouth. Who is Adelia, Adela, and whence comes it that you respect her so highly? She was what I am now, a Burgmagd of this place. Is she then wiser and better than I and all the others? Or is she more conversant with our laws and customs? If that had been the case, she would have become mother when she was chosen. But instead of that, she preferred matrimony to a single life, watching over herself and her people. She is certainly very clear-sighted, but my eyes are far from being dim. I have observed that she is very much attached to her husband, which is very praiseworthy, but I see likewise that Tiunt is a Pole's niece. Further, I say nothing. The principal people understood very well which way the wind blew with her, but among the people there arose disputes, and as most of the people came from here, they would not give the honor to Tiunt. The conferences were ended, knives were drawn, and no mother was chosen. Shortly afterwards, one of our messengers killed his comrade. As he had been a man of good character hitherto, my Burgtmad had permission to help him over the frontier. But instead of helping him over to Twixland, Germany, she fled with him herself to Wisara, and then to the Magi. The Magi, who wished to please his sons of Raya, appointed her mother of Godeberg in Schoenland. But she wished for more, and she told him that if he could get Adela out of the way, he might become master of the whole of Raya's land. She said she hated Adela for having prevented her from being chosen mother. If he would promise her Texland, her messenger would serve as a guide to his warriors. All this was confessed, confessed by her messenger. The second writing, Fifteen months after the last General Assembly, at the festival of, festival of Har Harvest Month, everybody gave himself up to pleasure and merrymaking. No one thought of anything but diversion. But Waralda wished to teach us that watchfulness should never be relaxed. In the midst of the festivities, the fog came and enveloped every place in darkness. Cheerfulness melted away, but watchfulness did not take its place. The Coast Guard deserted their beacons, and no one was to be seen on any of the paths. When the fog rose, the sun scarcely appeared among the clouds, but the people all came out shouting with joy, and the young folks went about singing with, to their bagpipes, filling the air with their melody. But while everyone was intoxicated with pleasure, treachery had landed with its horses and riders. As usual, darkness had favored the wicked, and they had slipped in through the paths of Linda's wood. Before Adela's door, 
12 bras led 12 lambs, and 12 boys led 12 calves. A young Saxon bestrode a wild bull, which he had caught and tamed. They were decked with all kinds of flowers, and the girls' dresses were fringed with gold from the Rhine. When Adela came out of her house, a shower of flowers fell on her head. They all cheered loudly, and the fifes of the boys were heard over everything. Poor Adela, poor people, how short will, your, will be your joy? When the procession was out of sight, a troop of Magyar soldiers rushed up to Adela's house. Her father and her husband were sitting on the steps. The door was open, and within stood Adelbrost, her son. When he saw the danger of his parents, he took his bow from the wall and shot the leader of the pirates, who staggered and fell on the grass. The second and third met a similar fate. In the meantime, his parents had seized their weapons and went slowly to John's house. They would soon have been taken, but Adela came. She had learned in the burg to use all kinds of weapons. She was seven feet high, and her sword was the same length. She waved it three times over her head, and each time a knight bit the earth. Reinforcements came, and the pirates were made prisoners. But too late, an arrow had penetrated her bosom. The treacherous Maggie had poisoned it, and she died of it. The Elegy of the Burkmagd Yes, departed friend, thousands are arrived, and more are coming, and they wish to hear the wisdom, wisdom of Adela. Truly, she was a princess, for she had always been the leader. Oh, sorrow, what good can you do? Her garments of linen and wool she spun and wove herself. How could she add to her beauty? Not with pearls, for her teeth were more white. Not with gold, for her tresses were more brilliant. Not with precious stones, for her eyes, though soft as those of a lamb, were so lustrous that you could scarcely look into them. But why do I talk of beauty? Freya was certainly not more beautiful. Yes, my friends, Freya, who possessed seven perfections, of which each of her daughters inherited one, or at most three. But even if she had been ugly, she was still would have been dear to us. Is she warlike? Listen, my friend, Adela was the only daughter of our Gravetman. She stood seven feet high. Her wisdom exceeded her stature, and her courage was equal to both together. Here is an instance. There was once a turf ground on fire. Three children got upon yonder gravestone. There was a furious wind. The people were all shouting, and the mother was helpless. Then came Adela. What are you all standing still for, she cried. Try to help them, and Waraldo will give you strength. And then she ran to the Crailwood and got some elder branches, to which she made a bridge, and others came to assist her, and the children were saved. The children bring flowers to the place every year. There came once three Phoenician sailors, who began to ill-treat the children. When Adela, having heard their screams, beat the scoundrels till they were insensible, and then, to prove to them what miserable wretches they were, she tied them all three to a spindle. The foreign lords came to look after their people, and when they saw how ridiculously they had been treated, they were very angry, till they were told what had happened. Upon that they bowed themselves before Adela, and kissed the hem of her garment, but come distant, living friend, the birds of the forest fled before the numerous visitors. Come, friend, and you shall hear her wisdom. By the gravestone of which mention has already been made, her body is buried. Upon the stone the following words are inscribed. Tread softly, for here lies Adela. The old legend which is written on the outside wall of the city tower is not written in the book of Adela's flowers. Why this has been neglected I do not know, but this book is my own, so I shall put it in out of regard to my relations. The Oldest Doctrine Hail to all the well-intentioned children of Freya. Through them the earth shall become holy. Learn and announce to the people, Waralda is the Ancient of Ancients and he created all things. Waralda is 
all in all. For he is eternal and everlasting. Uralda is omnipresent but invisible and therefore is called a spirit. All that we can see of him are the created beings who come to life through him and go again. Because from Uralda all things proceed and return to him. Uralda is the beginning and the end. Uralda is the only almighty being because from him all other strength comes and returns to him. Therefore he alone is the creator and nothing exists without him. Uralda established eternal principles upon which the laws of creation were founded. No good laws could stand on any other foundation. But although everything is derived from Uralda, the wickedness of men does not come from him. Wickedness comes from heaviness, carelessness, and stupidity. Therefore, they may well be injurious to men, but never to Waralda. Waralda is wisdom, and the laws that he has made are the books from which we learn. Nor is any wisdom to be found or gathered but in them. Men may see a great deal, but Waralda sees everything. Men can learn a great deal, but Waralda knows everything. Men can discover much, but to Waralda everything is open. Mankind are male and female, but Waralda created both. Mankind love and hate, but Waralda alone is just. Therefore, Waralda is good, and there is no good without him. In the progress of time, all creation alters and changes, but goodness alone is unalterable. And since Waralda is good, he cannot change. As he endures, he alone exists. Everything else is show.